Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Wednesday, October 24th, 2012. James Burns here giving you a review of the free and equal elections third party presidential debate, which took place Tuesday night and was hosted by Larry King, along with the free and equal founder, Christina Tobin. It was 90 minutes long and it had uh, four presidential candidates, Libertarian Party, uh, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein from the Green Party, Virgil Good from the Constitution Party, and Rocky Anderson from the Justice Party. And they went over a number of topics, including the uh, two-party system, the uh, war on drugs, foreign policy, economy, uh, civil rights uh, regarding uh, the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, indefinite detention. They also talked about which, uh, if they had an opportunity to have a constitutional amendment added to the Constitution of Bill of Rights, you know, the additional amendments that have been added over the past number of decades, uh, what would it be? Um, Rocky Anderson uh, said that he would add equal rights for everyone, not just for, uh, you know, people of color, but also for people of different uh, sexes and sexualities and sexual identity. So that was interesting. And uh, Virgil Good and Gary Johnson both wanted uh, term limits for their constitutional amendment. And Jill Stein, she wanted um, money, not speech, uh, and uh, corporations are not people type of an amendment. That was interesting. And, of course, they all got an opening and a closing statement. They each got uh, two minutes per uh, topic, and they each had a chance for a one-minute rebuttal. And I got to say this. Christina Tobin and everybody at freeandequal.org did a fantastic job putting on this debate. And Larry King deserves kudos and needs to be commended as well for the work he did. Because I know there's a lot of haters out there. A lot of people have been bashing Larry King. And you know who you are. But think about this. Because of the fact that he was involved in this third party debate, it got way more attention by the media and because of him, it even got picked up by RT, Al Jazeera, and, of course, C-SPAN. So, I'm sorry. I'm not going to go off bashing Larry King for whatever rhyme or reason. I say that it's good to have more people coming into the movement, like Larry King, who a couple weeks earlier came out in favor of legalizing marijuana. Isn't that our purpose? Isn't it that our goal? We have to reach out and appeal to people? Not just regular Joes and Janes, but celebrities, uh, sports stars, and people in the mainstream media. we got to get as many people on board as possible, and I'm glad that Larry King is, is part of this now. I'm glad that he you know, decided to you know, take the time to go to Chicago and partake in this very important real debate. Unlike the uh, dog and pony show debates we had, thanks to the you know commission on presidential debates, which controlled, of course, by the two-party puppet show, the Republicans and Democrats, you know he did something that is very very commendable in my opinion. So I'm not going to bash Larry King for doing the right thing. Moving on, this was the presidential debate that I've been asking for and begging for for uh, some time now, all the way back to say, the uh, 2007 primary debates, both the Republicans and the Democrats, because in the Republican debates, obviously, back then in 2008 and 2012, Ron Paul got the shaft, and this time around, of course, uh, Gary Johnson also got the shaft when he was running as a Republican, and speaking of Dennis Kucinich, because I was about to bring him up, when he ran for president on the Democratic ticket back in 2008, he got a very similar treatment that Ron Paul received. Very little time. And that was something that I really enjoyed about this debate. There was equal time for all four candidates on stage. They all were allowed the opportunity and a chance to answer each debate topic that was brought up. And Larry King did an excellent job moderating this debate, making sure that the candidates uh, didn't take too much time, that they talked within the time frame they each had, two minutes. Some of them went over by a couple seconds. That happens. And, you know, he brought to the table a sense of professionalism that gave this debate 
a lot more credibility than past third party debates. And that's a big reason why I think it was so popular, so well received, is because you had Larry King there. You had all this hard work done by Christina Tobin and Free and Equal. And of course, all four of the uh, candidates that showed up for the debate, you know, Rocky Anderson from the Justice Party, Jill Stein from the Green Party, Gary Johnson from the Libertarian Party, Virgil Good from the Constitution Party. And, you know, I, w I will say that at the very beginning of the debate, it, it started off a little rough. You know, the candidates didn't get to, uh, at first, get the opportunity to do the opening statement because there was a small snafu, but it was quickly corrected and rectified after the first topic was, you know, brought up and taken care of. So they did get to do the opening statement. It just didn't work out in, you know, a proper order, but it got done. So that's what's cool. They all got equal time, like I said, and you got a real opportunity to gauge all four of these candidates where they stood on the issues. Now, obviously, some of the things that some of the candidates talked about I agreed with, and there were some things that he talked about that I disagreed with, but that's not the point. I'm not going to sit here and, and bash uh, candidates A, B, or C because I disagree with their point of view. The, the point of the debate is to bring different ideas to the table. You know, Gary Johnson, his ideas, which I obviously, no surprise, no shock, he's my guy, he's the guy I'm going to support and vote for on Election Day, but at the same time, Despite the fact that I disagree with some of the things that, uh, you know, Good said, some of the things that, that Stein said, some of the things that Anderson said, you know what? I'm glad that they were there. I'm glad that they had an opportunity to tell the audience there in Chicago and, of course, on TV and on the Internet that we're watching via uh, freeandequal.org, RT, Al Jazeera, and, of course, on uh, cable or satellite through C-SPAN, their, their views on these important issues. I'm glad they had this opportunity because not everybody listening is a libertarian. Not everybody listening to my podcast is a conservative. Not everybody listening is a liberal. We all have different points of views on subjects and, and I embrace and welcome everybody's point of view. I'm not out demonizing any of you. What I demonize are the puppets that represent the two-party puppet show because for the most part, they're one and the same. And I would say this, I like these four presidential candidates way more. And I think they're at least real human beings that are passionate and care about the direction this country is going than those other two clowns. So I would trust Gary Johnson, Virgil Good, Jill Stein, and Rocky Anderson as president way more than those other two guys. And it's sad that you have this stranglehold in this country regarding the two-party puppet show. Obama and Romney, that you know, none of the third-party candidates had an opportunity to partake in those debates. In fact, you had one of the candidates arrested for being there. Jill Stein and her running mate were arrested. Were they released? No. They were detained for eight hours. I mean, what kind of country is this? It's insane, and we got to start breaking away from this mold, from this same old tired, broken record that we saw Monday night. For the most part... Romney and Obama agreed on a lot of things. And it shows you exactly where the two parties are now. There isn't really that many differences anymore. And the differences are just trivial and illusion to make people think that there's actually a choice there. And there's not a choice. It's alien versus predator. Whoever wins, we lose. That's what you get when you have a Democrat or a Republican in the White House. And we've seen this happen over and over again. It gets worse and worse. It, 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 I could go as far back as I want to, but I digress. You know, it sucked under Clinton, it sucked under Bush, it's sucking under Obama, and if Romney becomes the 44th puppet, I mean 45th puppet, whatever, it's going to suck under him too. These people offer no real solutions. They offer no real change. It's just going to get worse and worse. And that's a big reason why I stand up and I say, no, I'm not voting for Obama. I'm not voting for Romney. I don't give a crap about either one of them. I'm not scared of, an, of a Romney administration or an Obama administration because I, I see it as one the same. That's the way I see it. That whole, oh, you're wasting your vote does not intimidate me. It does not scare me. For one thing, it's my vote, and I have a right to vote for whoever the hell I want to vote for. And secondly, you know, you go vote for whoever you want to vote for. But we should have more options in this country. We deserve more options. And that's one thing I like about what Free and Equal is doing. They're giving you options, real options, real men and women running for office, for the highest office in our country. 
And these four people, I would say, are a lot more qualified and a lot more credible and deserving of that position to sit in the White House for four years and maybe even eight years. But I digress. It was a fantastic debate, and if you missed it, I will link it up on the uh, YouTube channel so you can go watch it for yourself. And it's about 90 minutes long. Really good if you didn't get a chance to watch it. But they do have another debate coming up. It's going to be the uh, second free and equal debate. It's going to be happening on Tuesday, October 30th. That's right, Halloween Eve. And the way it's going to go down is where the first debate was between four presidential candidates. Uh, the second debate is going to come down to two candidates. And now, if you log on to freeandequal.org, freeandequal.org, and you cast your vote, you rank how they did, performance-wise, first through fourth. You go on there uh, within the next 24 hours, and you cast your vote that way. You, you fill out your email address, and you rank them. You, you say, I think this guy did the best, uh, this person did second best, third best, fourth best, rank it email it, send it, you're done, and then they're going to tabulate the votes, and then they're going to decide which two candidates get to move on to the second third-party presidential debate coming up on Tuesday, October 30th. Now, I know all of you want to know who won. Of course, I'm going to say who won because it's my opinion. I believe Gary Johnson won. He was passionate. He came in there. He made um, a very strong standing, and he was very well-received by the audience. And that was something that was interesting because – they allowed the audience to uh, participate and to clap, unlike the uh, CPD debates. And I kind of go back and forth on that because I don't really have a problem with the audience clapping, but I think the audience should wait till each candidate is done. Because you only get two minutes to talk, and you should wait till Gary Johnson or Virgil Good, Jill Stein, Rocky Anderson are done with their two minutes, then clap briefly if you agree with what they had to say, and then let the other guy go. And, and don't, because that, that, that eats away their time, but I digress. Anyways, so if you believe that uh, Gary Johnson or Virgil Good or Rocky Anderson or Jill Stein was the best, go and vote. If you want to see any of those two, any of those four as part of the second debate, because there's only going to be two, it's bracketed, then go vote. Go rank them at freeandequal.org. And okay, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll rank it. I'll give you my rank. This is how I did it when I went and voted. First place, Gary Johnson. Second place, Rocky Anderson. Third place, Jill Stein. And fourth place, Virgil Good. Now, obviously, I, I disagree with a lot of things that uh, Jill Stein and Rocky Anderson say. A lot of their platform, I disagree with completely. But their performance was good. I would say the top two performers, the top two debaters, was Rocky Anderson and Gary Johnson. They both had a better presentation. Jill Stein had the third best presentation. And I just didn't really think that Virgil Good stacked up. Now, some people may have a different opinion than I do regarding that. I think he did a decent job, but when you have to rank four people, you know, there's going to be a first place, there's going to be a second place, a third place, and then there's going to be a fourth place. That's how I ranked it. So I would love to see it come down to Gary Johnson versus Rocky Anderson because that would give you actually you know, two different points of view on – the, the different topics, because if you get Jill Stein versus Rocky Anderson, they're going to agree on a lot of issues. I mean, they, they basically do. I mean, nothing nothing wrong with that. But I think it would be more compelling of a debate to have Gary Johnson versus Rocky Anderson. I definitely think that Gary Johnson's going to be in the next debate. I think he'll easily get first place, and he'll be able to have an interesting debate with any of the other three candidates, but I think that it will most likely be Rocky Anderson. And I could be wrong about that. It could end up being Jill Stein are even Virgil Good, but it doesn't really matter because he has differences than the other three candidates. There's some similarities between him and those three, but there's also enough differences to make it a very lively, interesting debate. But if it came down to Jill Stein and Rocky Anderson, I don't know, it'd be too much like uh, the Obama-Romney debate. Okay, that was a low blow. I sincerely apologize to Jill Stein and Rocky Anderson for comparing you two to Obama and Romney. I didn't mean it that way, okay? I just My point was you two agree on a lot of things. But anyways, uh, I thought you all four did a fantastic job, and I'm glad you all are taking a stand against the two-party puppet show and are trying to actually make a real difference in this country. And I applaud all four of you for what you've done, as well as Christina Tobin, Larry King, everybody involved with freeandequal.org, and, of course, everyone that, that actually picked up the debate, like Al Jazeera, RT, and, of course, C-SPAN. 
And C-SPAN does a really good job about that. They, they pick up a whole bunch of debates, so that, that's awesome. And hopefully they'll pick up the next debate, which if you want to find out more about it, uh, the second freeandequal.org presidential debate, it's going to be on October 30th, coming up on Tuesday, Halloween Eve. And for more information, log on to freeandequal.org.